This week, there was huge hype, of course, around the new Samsung Galaxy phone. To talk about this and much, much more, we are joined by tech guide man himself, Stephen Fennick. First off, where are you, Steve? Good morning, Tim. Yeah, I'm still in San Francisco. I, I actually leave tonight. So uh, uh, the event was a couple of days ago. Uh, Samsung held their, their Galaxy Unpacked event. Uh, that was to introduce the Galaxy S23, the S23 Plus, and the S23 Ultra, which actually I already have right here. You see that it's... Uh, this is a, an advanced flagship device that Samsung have come up with here with improvements across the board, slight design changes as well. But really, the, the, it's under the hood where all the main features uh, can be found in terms of a gr much faster processor. A processor so fast that it can actually handle high-end games on the device. You can even Bluetooth a, a Sony or an Xbox controller and be able to play your games on the device on the move. And of course, being a good processor for gaming means it's a good processor for everything else. But the main talk, though, is about that camera and on the Ultra, which I have in my hand here, this has a 200 megapixel camera uh, and it, it, amazing low light capabilities as well. I know Juro's a massive camera fan and he's going to be talking a little bit more about the, the camera tomorrow morning. But so, suffice it to say, this is set, setting the new benchmark in terms of photography, uh, 200 megapixel. It's even got an astrophotography feature, which I'm very interested in. I'm really keen to try that when I'm back in Australia. But it, this is really setting the benchmark benchmark now for flagship devices. This goes on sale on February the 17th. Uh, it's starting at $1,349 for the entry level, the S23, all the way up to $1,949 for the, the S23 Ultra. They're actually $100 more expensive than the S22. But what Samsung has done, they've actually doubled the memory capacity on the entry model. So you're basically paying for the same amount of memory you would have got a year ago anyway. So it's almost the same price. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, going to... There's going to be a lot of interest around this one. A lot of offers as well from telcos to... Uh, if you get in and pre-order, you're going to get maybe a free watch, free earphones and other many other offers to uh, take advantage of. So Samsung out of the blocks. Uh, what about the other brands? Well, Samsung's got the advantage here because, as, as we know, this is going to launch on February 17, and it's going to be almost eight months before we see another iPhone. But there is uh, a lot of other interest in other from other brands. Uh, here, I'm hearing a lot about Google, the Google Pixel phone, which has been very popular in Australia. The massive rumour around the Google Pixel is the fact that it's going to probably... They may be introducing a foldable version of the Pixel. What you're seeing right now, this is the Pixel 7 Pro. So there's, there's huge talk around them introducing their very first foldable device. And, of course, Samsung are going to follow up with their fifth generation of folding devices. Apple uh, as well, their, their iPhone 15 won't be, won't be uh, released till September. But the, the big discussion around the iPhone, design-wise, we don't think it's going to change very much. The big talk is around whether they're going to get rid of the lightning connection, the lightning port on the iPhone. It's the last Apple device to still have lightning the talk is that iPhone 15 may be forced to adopt the USB-C port, which is uh, going to be the law in Europe for all devices to have the same connection. But it could just be that Apple does just ditches the port, the charging port altogether and makes it that you can only charge the device using MagSafe, so wirelessly charge the phone anyway. So we'll find out in September whether you've got to get a new charging, uh, new charging cable for your iPhone or whether you might not even need it at all. What about this new flash microphone? Yeah, this is from Rode. That's an Aussie company, by the way. Rode Microphones, a huge company that have so popular around the world. They make all these products in Silverwater, in, uh, in a Sydney suburb of Silverwater. And this is the new NTH100M. Now, what they did last year, they released a pair of headphones these headphones, the NTH100s, and now with this new headset that you can actually buy the, the microphone separately and just attach it using the bayonet connector. So it turns a pair of headphones into a headset or you can buy the whole thing with the microphone and everything included. Now, if you're wondering how good this sounds, Trevor Long and I have had these headphones for about three months. We weren't able to talk about them until a few days ago. So if you go back and listen to the last 10 episodes of Two Blokes Talking Tech, you can hear for yourself the quality. They are, they are pretty impressive. Broadcast quality uh, in a nice Aussie-made uh, headset. You've been down to Fisherman's Wharf and had some seafood, mate? 
I have actually. Timmy, yeah, I was uh, down there a couple of days ago, and uh, I've got a few, a bit of time to kill once I finish talking to you here. I might, might head back down there once again. It's a, it's a shame it's not a sunny day. It's a bit wetter here today, but uh, weather's been a bit cool, but it hasn't been too bad. I've uh, enjoyed my time here. You pop across to Alcatraz. How's South going to go? Yeah, I think they're shaping up pretty well. Uh, good to see that they've re-signed Latrell and Cody and Damian Cook, a few young juniors coming up through the ranks as mm. well. Lachlan Elias, I think, will be even better this season after his first season as halfback. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing the season kick off again. I think it's early March, so I'm counting the days, mate. Yeah, just a few weeks away. All right, travel safe. We'll talk to you next week.